Hey guys, Chad here at the Hidden Spring Farm. Today, we're gonna be building a super quick and easy rabbit cage. For the sides and the top, we're gonna be using this heavy duty cage wire. It's a one inch by two inch opening, and it's a 14 gauge. For the bottom, we're gonna be using this sucker. This is a 30 inch long, half inch by one inch, and it's also 14 gauge. Now this cage is gonna be custom to what I want to use it for and I want to use it as a quarantine cage only so I'm going to be making it 30 inches deep this is going to be the bottom and it's already 30 inches long so this is going to be the depth of the cage so I'm not even going to have to cut this a lot the other roll I'm going to have to cut it a little bit because I only want to make them 24 inches tall a lot of people make their cages 18 or 20 inches tall now some of the tools I'm going to be using for this project is this. These are uh, spring locks to lock your door. These are the J-clips. I'm using this uh, Pet Lodge brand and these are going to be used to tie the two pieces of cage together. This is the J-clip pliers and that's used to squish these J-clips. I got some wire cutters and it's not necessary but I'll probably use it is my angle grinder and I also have one of these bin feeders that I'm gonna be attaching to the outside. Just a quick note about your cage wire. I feel like it's important to know, I've been doing a lot of research on this, and you wanna use cage wire, not hardware cloth. And it's very important that the cage wire is galvanized after the welding. If you get cage wire that's galvanized first, and then they do the spot welds, those are gonna rust for sure. It's also important to use a 14 gauge wherever possible. It's easier on the hawks of the rabbit. They're not gonna develop sores because the wire is a little bit thicker gauge. I know this stuff's super hard to find. You may have to bend a little bit and use 16 gauge, but just do your best with what you got. You're also gonna need a measuring tape, of course. Now, because I'm making my cage 36 inches wide, by 30 inches deep, you have to basically do some math here. Two 36s are 72, and two 30s are 60. And then 72 and 60 is 132. So I wanna be making my cut at 132 inches. And then I'll be bending the wire into a rectangular shape. Now in my case, the only cage wire I could find was 36 inches, and I only want my cage to be 30 inches. So I'm gonna have to trim it down to 30 inches. I just used the two by four to bend the four sides of the cage at a 90 degree angle, and it just helps to get that 90 degree angle. Otherwise, if you try to bend it by hand, you're just gonna have a difficulty and it'll end up being rounded. But you gotta figure out a way to mount the two by four because it'll just keep moving on you. In my case, I just screwed it down to the floor here. Some people use clamps and they clamp it down. I've marked out on the cage 30 inches, then 36 inches, 30 inches, then 36 inches. That way you get the two fronts and the two sides and we have to bend them to make that shape. And it can be quite cumbersome once you get the first or second bend in, you're gonna have to fight with the hanging piece, but you just gotta fight through it and get it so that all four corners are bent at a 90 degree angle, and then you can go ahead and attach them together. Junkie, what are you doing? You checking out my new cage? Now we're just working on the bottom. This is the half inch by one inch cage wire. And I gotta stretch it out and measure out 36 inches. This is the J-clip. This is the J-clip pliers. Open these suckers up and you gotta put it in like so. And then you just simply squeeze. and you'll see what it's doing, and there it is. We don't want to attach these two ends yet. What we want to do is get the top piece on 
and we'll have to just kind of mess with this a bit to keep getting it on with the J clips and you'll see it start to take shape after we get a bunch of J clips on. You'll probably end up with far too many J clips but that's okay. You just want to keep it secure and snug and once it starts taking shape you'll realize that you probably only need a J clip every two or three inches. Takes a little bit of time to go around and around. Keep trying to make it straight. Keep trying to get it bent to the way you want it. Attach these J clips. And you can see as I'm attaching all the J clips, it's straightening out and it's gonna make a complete rectangle now. So now that the bottom's done, we have to cut the piece for the top and attach it. But you have to enclose the rectangle here. What I like to do is just go a little bit, not all the way to the top there, until I get the top piece on. Then I'll go ahead and suture up the side. Now this one by two cage wire that I'm using is already 36 inches long. So all I need to do is cut this way 30 inches and then I'll be good and I'm, use, and I'm using that for the top of the cage. Dexter! Hey buddy! Once I get the first couple of J clips on here, I put a 2x4 across just to help this sit up straight. If you're doing it with a partner, they can help you hold it, but I'm just alone here. Just getting the last couple of J clips attached here and then the shape of this cage is going to be done. So you can see once you get a complete rectangle it's very solid. So now that we got this sucker built, time to cut the door. I figure I'm just going to make the door 12 inches by 12 inches. So I need to measure I don't know if I want to put the door in the center because I have to attach that feeder plus you need a spot to put the water so I'll probably put it off center here a bit. Time to snip. Angle grinding time. Yeah. Now some people put a plastic protective edge around the opening of your door so that the rabbit doesn't get scratched going in and out or your hands even. I don't think you need that and I've heard stories of the rabbits chewing that and removing it so I'm just going to use the angle grinder and I'm going to make sure that there's no sharp edges around the door entry. Dexter, how you doing buddy? You doing okay? cut the door about 16 by 14 inches and that way it's going to hit up top here and down below and on the side and I'm just going to have this as a hinge. I just got to put some J clips here and we're off. This is the little locking mechanism that I'm going to be using. You just turn that onto one side. This is like a key ring and then this has a spring on it and it'll allow you to stretch and hook the door on. This has got like a little handle here, this little round thing and that can just pull and that locks it. Now to attach this bin feeder we have to cut a little hole because I want this mounted on the outside. 
sometimes you gotta mess with it a bit to get it hooked on. This allows you to open up and you can put the feed in there from the outside. Guys, here's the cage. It's looking good. Got the door working okay. I put the buck in there for now just to see how he's going to do in there. He doesn't like it much. Right now I free range the rabbits. They just have free run inside this little pen until I build them their brand new rabbitat. I need to get a cage ready just in case I have to quarantine any of the rabbits. I need to get a little plank or something or a tile to put on the bottom there so they can have some rest time off of the, the wire so it doesn't bother their feet. Anyways guys, I appreciate you watching. Hopefully that's gonna help you. If you're in the need for a rabbit cage and you wanna do it yourself, you think you're a little handy, this is easy to build. This is 24 inches high. Most people don't build their cages this high. I just want the rabbit to have the ability to stretch and climb and I might even put a second story loft in there so they can just get up off the, the cage. So that's it. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to pound that like if you think the video is any good. And if you want to follow along on our rabbit journey here at the farm, click that subscribe button below would you? And follow along on our journey. Thanks for watching. You guys take care, okay?